when I think about Dr. King's life, I think about so much of it being the unthinkable. You know, doing some research, born in 1929, the Jim Crow laws, I remember reading about the times that he was growing up, and obviously things are so much different now. I think we've come so far, and I was reading a story, and I'm a baseball guy, and he was outside playing. He was six years old. He was six years old playing with his friend, and they're outside playing with one another, thinking about my son. He'll be five this year. And I, I just imagine my son, this is Dr. King in the story, he's playing with his friend back and forth, and all of a sudden somebody stops him. He says, you guys can't play together. Dr. King looks at him, he says, wasn't Dr. King yet, but he says, well, why can't we play together, man? He said, this is my son. He says, okay, but why can't we play together? He said, because you're black and my son is white. That's why you guys can't. Thinking about being six years old, being innocent, hearing those words. 1935 and throughout his life man I was reading and he was thrown in a jail over 30 times trying to get people that look like you and you and, and me to live in harmony I kept reading about his mission of bringing people together and for me for some reason I just keep thinking the, the missions that we have are aligned I kept reading and throughout all that stuff man he had assassination attempts on his life the one that wasn't an attempt, but ultimately took his life. And I think about all the tragedy and trauma that he was faced with, and still he was able to accomplish so many things. Went to the Nobel Peace Prize, and, and 99 years after the abolition of slavery, they got the Civil Rights Act passed, and all these things, these great, amazing things that allowed me to stand here today is because of Dr. King and so many others.